Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Velocity 2017 in San Jose. I'm here with Toby from Mesosphere. Toby, how are you doing? Doing great, how are you? So you're the co-founder. Mm -hmm. What, what how, how did you think about founding a company like Mesosphere? Yeah, well myself and my two co-founders, uh, we were the people that were building infrastructure at Airbnb and Twitter, two large uh, web scale companies. And uh, we were using an open source software called Apache Mesos to do that. And uh, you know, it was a very powerful technology, it really solved a lot of problems for us. Uh, so we thought, you know, let's start a company around this and, and package it, turn it into a product that many other companies can use as well. And so containers have kind of exploded and they're really hot right now. But do they present trouble or potential challenges for technology people? Right, yeah, so containers uh, have really started uh, on developers' laptops, right? Um, we have great tools for building containers on our laptops or packaging any application uh, into a container. Uh, the challenges are really um, when you put them in production, and it's no different than any other production software. Uh, you need to make sure that uh, the platform that you're running the containers on is highly available, right? that it doesn't go down. Um, that um, you monitor things the right way, that you get the right access to the logs and you have troubleshooting tools available to you. So um, containers really change uh, how we use these tools, right? Um, a lot of the monitoring tools, for example, have been built uh, prior to cloud, so they're very machine-centric, uh, whereas containers really uh, create this, uh, this abstraction that's more application-centric. So a lot of the tools don't really work that well, and we need to rethink how, how some of these operational tools work. Um, other challenges, um, you know, containers are great for, for packaging applications um, for running 12-factor apps, but these 12-factor apps, these stateless 12-factor apps, also need to connect to databases, to backing services. And so another challenge is um, how do you run these backing services in the container world? So microservices and containers, are, are they synonymous or do people put them together uh, artificially? Or, or they're not dependent on each other, but... Yeah, they're not, they're not dependent on each other, uh, but they often get used together because uh, containers really make microservices very easy. Mm -hmm. um, but you can use them independently too. So um, a lot of folks also take, you know, legacy three-tier enterprise applications, um, you know, like a Tomcat application server, and put that in a container and run it. So, you know, they're often used together, but they're not, uh, you know, married together. And, and then there's the, you add in cloud and cloud native. Mm -hmm. um, is that another piece to this larger puzzle? Yeah, so cloud native uh, really expresses how the largest uh, web companies have built their infrastructure and how they've optimized it for fast innovation and fast iteration. So cloud native really means um, getting all, all that, your software stack ready for your development teams, your product teams to, to put out software quickly. To deploy software. To deploy yeah. it quickly yeah. too. And, and this is really something that uh, every enterprise, every company and every, any industry should care about, right? How can I deploy software daily instead of twice a year? And how do I make it so a deploy is, um, happens in seconds instead of hours? How do I make it so deploys are not scary things, but uh, they're actually you know, things I enjoy. I want to get my code out faster, because that's how I can test things with users faster and iterate on the product faster. And so cloud native is, is really a way of designing infrastructure to enable this fast iteration. And so what are the inherent risks when, when someone is looking at delivering a cloud native app in, on a continuous, deployment basis, and then what are also the opportunities? Yeah, so, so the risks of course are, you know, you're making changes to your production infrastructure very often. So um, you want to make sure that, that these changes are um, sort of minimal and controlled. And, and you know, container platforms like DCS really provide the, the tools and, and abstraction uh, workflows like continuous integration and continuous deployment provide the right tools so that these things are, are low risk. So you run all the tests before things go out. You can do uh, blue-green deployments um, to start you know, your new version of your app in parallel to the old one so you have a way to roll back. So it's really important to use these tools to kind of de-risk it. And the opportunities are really, it, it encourages innovation, right? It encourages your developers to put things out there faster and test it with real users to get feedback from those real users earlier. And that's how the big web companies like Facebook and Twitter and Airbnb are you know, testing new features and they're iterating fast. Well, so, and those big companies are also using something that's, uh, or wanting to be involved with real-time and streaming data. Mm -hmm. 
because everyone today wants to be relevant and of the moment. So how do, how do containers and how do uh, microservices and, and everything work together in cloud native with the, the need for real up-to-date streaming data? Right. So, so collecting and uh, making sense and analyzing the data is, is one of the most important things that any company has to do. It's, it's often the data in, in, in a company is the main piece of intellectual property, right? Whether you're, um, you're a search company that uses that data to uh, show ads or uh, you're an IoT company that's learning from all the devices and the sensors and using that to make the product better, um, the data is really where it's at. So um, to collect data in real time and analyze it in real time and get insights in real time, you really need to run a lot of infrastructure. Um, the SMAC stack is a pattern that's becoming popular there. It stands for Spark, Mesos, Akka, Cassandra, and Kafka. So Kafka is a message queue to ingest data in real time, Spark to process it, Cassandra to store it, Akka to build applications and show that data uh, back to the user. Um, now these are all fairly complex infrastructure pieces. They're distributed systems. So setting them up, operating them, upgrading them, making them highly available, all the operations around it, um, it's pretty involved. And, and so if you take the traditional IT model of one app per server and training people for each one of those technologies, that's very ineffective, right? It, you have to, it's hard to find the talent to operate these things. And if you put them on into uh, silos on different servers, you're also wasting a lot of resources. So, so a public cloud would be a better solution? Or? Public cloud would be a better solution. It makes that really easy um, because the public cloud automates the operations of these complicated uh, softwares. But there could be some risks with that. There's some risks, exactly. So if you're using them on a public cloud, they're often behind proprietary APIs. And so if you do that, you end up locking yourself into one particular cloud provider. And, and that's a very, you gotta be careful with that. Um, you know, and if I, you know, a lot of CIOs and CTOs I talk to, the majority of them uh, pick a hybrid cloud model to architect. And, and so if you're locking yourself into one cloud um, at the level of the databases and the message queues that you're using, that means your application is no longer portable. So if you wanna go to a different cloud provider because it has better performance, or you want to also leverage your data center, you have to re-architect. It's not truly portable. So uh, platforms like DCOS uh, provide truly portable data services. Um, DCOS takes leading open source and commercial software like Cassandra, Kafka, and their commercial versions, and automates the operations of it the same way that a public cloud does it. So it's kind of the pub public cloud secret sauce, um, but it's available to you on any infrastructure, whether you actually want to run it on a public cloud or on bare metal in the data. And is there a public version of DCOS and a enterprise edition of DCOS, or how does that work? That's right. So, so you know, we were born out of open source, um, Apache Mesos, and so we have an open core model. There is a open source version of DCOS uh, that anybody can use and, and run anywhere. And then there's also an enterprise version, uh, which adds more features that enterprises need to go to production, uh, and Mesosphere provides uh, commercial support for that as well. So, Toby, if you and I sit down 12 months from now, and have the same conversation next year at this mm -hmm. time. What would you like to say changes for Mesosphere in those mm -hmm. 12 months? Yeah, so uh, what Mesosphere is really focused on is um, bringing customers a public cloud-like experience on any infrastructure and with choice of workloads from an open ecosystem. So what we're focused on is bringing customers more databases, more message queues, more big data tools uh, to DCS. We really think it's a platform for running legacy apps, today's apps, and even tomorrow's apps. So to give you an example, um, you know, serverless or function-based programming is, is something that's, that's picking up in a lot of places. And, and again, you need to run a lot of infrastructure for that. The public clouds make that really easy, but what about other infrastructures? And so we already have uh, in the DCS App Store um, you know, two products from, from other vendors that, that uh, allow you to do function-based programming. So a lot more of these things and um, also a lot more um, if investment from Mesosphere to make uh, all of this work in a hybrid cloud environment. So, so it, it sounds like DCOS lets me scale up and scale out. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair description? I, I think that's fair to say, yeah. I think um, one of the uh, big advantages of a, a cluster manager like DCOS is it's very easy to scale elastically. So especially with workloads that are very spiky and everybody has those, um, those data processing jobs. Um, we talked about streaming data. You might have more data flowing in at different times of the day than other times. So you need to be able to elastically scale workloads up and down. 
And DCOS really autom automates that nicely. Excellent, Toby, we look forward to that conversation. Thank, Thank you. you very much.